Let's talk about the physics of the Brewster angle. So Brewster angle. What is the Brewster angle? Um, here we're talking about the physics of uh, reflection. So I think we know a little bit about that already because we, we covered Snell's law and all that stuff. So let's consider um, let's consider um, light coming in. Um, from um, medium here and uh, now here is a different medium and what happens at the interface we know that uh, the some light reflects and some light refracts right? so we, we know that <coughs> and so um, let's um, assume that this part has index of refraction and one this part has index of refraction and two um, let's uh, look at this um, situation along this axis. Um, so let's say that we have a side view um, along that direction. So if this is, um, let's see, what, what's the best coordinate? So let, let, let me figure out the best coordinate system soon. So here. Reflected beam and refracted beam. And um, let's say this is theta 1, and this would be the same angle theta 1, and let's say this is theta 2. Uh, and this index of refraction is n1, and index of refraction is n2. <coughs> um, and uh, let's actually take the coordinate system such that this is x, y, and then the axis pointing towards us is c. Okay, so this is the z axis. Um, in the opposite, opposite of z axis, negative z axis. Okay, so now uh, um, we, we're talking about polarization at this moment, so let's consider polarizations. So polarization is possible for the incoming beam here. There are two possibilities. Um, one possibility is, uh, let's say that E field is perpendicular to this direction, but it's in the XY plane. So that's um, that's one possibility. And then another possibility is the E field is along the Z direction. So E field is, so one might draw something like that, or maybe a back of the arrow or a tip of the arrow, like that. So that's, um, this is being E field parallel to the Z direction. So there's a, um, a terminology for this kind of um, um, polarizations. Um, this is called S polarization, and this is called P polarization. And so, uh, in the S polarization case, uh, for the reflected beam, you will have the same situation here. Um, electric field will go in and out um, with respect to the screen, and then the P polarization case, electric field will. will be perpendicular to this um, outgoing beam direction. And the same here. Uh, I'm actually just indicating the directions of the electric field. It's customary to plot this electric field just on the line of the beam. I'm not doing that just for the clarity of, the, of these diagrams. And if you, you, you can do so. So anyway, so there is P polarization. I'm just indicating the directions of electric field. So now the question is, um, <clears throat> for a given um, intensity of the incoming beam, how much beam will be reflected and how much beam will be refracted? We never quite we never quite discussed that. 
And the, and the thing is that the amount of a reflected beam and the amount of a refracted beam depends on which polarization you have. And the answer is that um, S polarization the S polarization has um, more reflection. So what that means is that if you if you're um, you know, near a um, large body of water or something like that, and uh, and the light is reflected off of the surface of the water, then the light that <coughs> comes to you will have a polarization which is more like this S. So if you think about it, this S polarization, what is the polarization here? The S polarization is like this. So in the case of the S polarization, the polarization is parallel to the surface. And in the case of the P polarization, uh, polarization uh, is, um, is not parallel to the surface, it has an angle um, with respect to the surface. So then you can conclude that um, the light reflected off of, off of any surface has, has a polarization um, which is more um, parallel to the surface of the reflection. Let's ask the question, why? Why is this? In order to answer this, <coughs> we need to um, note the following uh, trivial fact. Namely, if N1 and N2 were the same, then there will be there would be no reflection. That's quite trivial. Um, another way of saying it is that the reflected beam is the result of different interactions of light and matter in medium 1 and medium 2. If the way that the medium and light interacts is the same between medium 1 and medium 2, then N1 will be the same as N2 and there will be no reflection. So, <clears throat> then we ask, next, what does it mean that the medium and the light interact? What that means is that <clears throat> electric field passes in the medium like this, and in this electric field shakes uh, electrons in that medium. What that will cause is to generate little antennas along the way. Um, and these little antennas are what we call um, dipole moments. <clears throat> and these dipole moments are the reasons why the light, um, uh, why there, there are these um, uh, index of refractions in the first place, and in the second place, why at the boundary between these two media, the light uh, shows these um, <clears throat> reflective and refractive behaviors. So then, um, the, the, mo the, the directions of those um, dipole moments or little antennas are important uh, in, in, um, in, this, um, in this discussion um, where we um, um, discuss the difference between different polarizations. And let's look at the S polarization. Okay? In the S polarization case, um, the little antennas that form in the materials are always, look at this diagram, always in this direction because that's the direction of the electric field. So whatever the difference between the interaction and, and uh, difference of the interaction between medium 1 and medium 2 is, we can be rest assured that uh, um, the dipole moment that causes the uh, reflected light here is, is also in this direction. So then it follows that um, <clears throat> in, in, case, in the case of S polarization, we have a situation where the dipole moment is pointing in and out of this screen and that causes this type of reflected light. And if you think about this situation, um, this is the precisely the situation where the uh, antenna is along the z-direction and the radiation is in the x-y plane. And we know that this situation is actually very efficient um, <coughs> channel. 
So it's, uh, in fact, it's the most efficient channel of radiation. most efficient channel of radiation <coughs> is this uh, realized uh, in the case of the S polarization no matter what this what these angles are right so um, in contrast in the case of P polarization we cannot say the same thing because um, P, P polarization is um, uh, in the XY plane and <coughs> and the radiation um, the, the um, the reflected light also is in the xy plane. So in general, this kind of the most efficient channel is not realized in the case of p polarization, and that's the reason why s polarization has more reflection. In particular, in particular, if if theta one and theta two is precisely ninety degrees. Um, <coughs> when they are summed up, then we have we have a special situation in which there is no intensity for the p-polarized light. All the intensity of the reflected light is in the S polarization channel. So that's um, the uh, the meaning of the Brewster angle. So in this case, the reflected light. reflected light is pure S. There's no P. There's no P component to it. So um, that means the um, it's 100% um, polarized. Pure polarization. So that's the Brewster angle. Um, <coughs> Let's do a little bit of math here. So if theta 1 plus theta 2 is 90 degrees and theta B is a uh, Brewster angle, then we can use the um, Snell's law here. So we can n1 sine theta 1 equals n2 sine theta 2, which is 90 degrees minus theta 1. Let's put this um, theta 1 as uh, theta B. So then n1 sine theta B equals now this is a uh, cosine theta one so that's n2 cosine theta b and if you solve for theta b what you get is theta b the Brewster angle is tangent inverse of n2 over n1 so that's the <coughs> that's the Brewster angle and uh, I'll try to remember that um, w one thing to note is that um, this theta b is defined um, whether or not n1, n2, which one of the n1 and n2 is bigger than the other. Okay, As long as they're different, the theta b is well defined. Okay, so um, let's discuss a little bit more about the physics of the Brewster angle. And in the particular case when n1 is 1, so uh, n1 is vacuum, and n2 is a uh, um, uh, number which is greater than 1, then there is a simple explanation why Brewster angle I is um, determined like that. So let's, let's, um, <coughs> let's do that. So let's uh, draw the diagram here. So. Um, So there's incoming light and reflected light and refracted light. And because theta 1 plus theta 2 is 90 degrees, what that means is that um, the angle between these two reflected light and refracted light is 90 degrees, like this. But now, in this case, remember what I said. The difference between the interaction of light and matter in medium 1 and medium 2, that causes the reflected beam. But here we have a very simple situation where in the medium uh, and medium 1 the refracted index is 1 so that means this is basically a vacuum. 
the interaction of light and matter is zero, so it, they don't interact at all. There are no, um, basically there are no uh, oscillating electrons, no dipoles there, nothing there, okay? It's just vacuum. But now we go to medium two, and medium two has some matter, and um, you know, electrons interact with light, and they create dipoles, and which are these little antennas of uh, oscillating electrons. <coughs> So in the case of um, P wave, let's do, draw the P wave. In the case of P, P polarization, the electric field is like that. So that means that this is how electrons are shaken in medium two. And if you think about it, if the electrons and light in medium two don't interact, we will not have any um, reflected light in, the, in this case, because then you know, medium one and medium two will be the same. So the only reason why we have reflected light in this case is because electrons interact with light in medium two. So these little um, arrows here, now you can consider that as the motion of um, electrons in medium two, and those, uh, and you can consider this as, as representing a little antenna um, that, emit, that, that, that emits light, and that, em that emitted light is, in, is actually this reflected light. So then, it follows that uh, in this case, the direction of the antenna and the direction of the reflected light, they are just the same direction. And we know what happens when, um, if you look back at the antenna lecture, you know what happens when this direction and that direction, the emitted light, the uh, direction and the antenna direction coincide. What that ha when, when, when that happens, there's no, no radiation. Remember the antenna is like this, and then you know, if you look for radiated light, um, along the direction of the antenna, there's no, no radiation. So that's it. This, this, this corresponds to that situation. So that means there's no emitted light, no light here, no P wave, P polarization light. So that's a simple way to understand why Brewster angle um, happens in a way that it happens.